Revit is such an incredibly great program, but it's so complicated to learn. And there's so many complex parts that you have to figure out each one, it seems like, unless you have a complete guide. And that's what this is. Hi, I'm Brandon, and I'll be your instructor for this complete guide to Revit basics. Revit is a comprehensive software. So in this course, I go through the interface, go through learning the basics, and going through an entire project where you start to experience the building information modeling tools that are at your grasp in Revit. I go through the project and I go through the elements and also workflows that help you be successful in your future work with Revit. This course is for those who might have uh, no idea of Revit to those who might have a basic understanding. This course is set up for the success of someone who can understand uh, the different concepts and modeling ideas that I had to learn when I first came to Revit uh, quite a few years ago. But I've been in the industry for 20 years and I've used Revit for over a decade. And it's gotten so much greater and more potential is in it. So I think it's a great program to use. I've done projects from small houses to towers to even working on universities and, and larger projects. So I'm giving you all that when you take my course and I make sure to look at the practical, the professional, and the imaginative as you go through the project. This class project will go through making a small traditional house design but using all the tools of Revit and it will help you prepare for make your first project and also to understand how to make that successful leap to your next projects and beyond. If you're ready to get started working on the complete guide to Revit then let's get going. Welcome to the Complete Revit Guide. If you've already gotten to this course, you're probably really ready to get started with learning about Revit. And the first thing to learn is for sure where to get Revit. I'll go over some of the principles about Revit as we look at their product page. Revit is a multidisciplinary software that gives you all sorts of great abilities. There is a high price tag per year, but there are other options uh, as well. You can also download a free trial. So if you're working on it by yourself or with a firm, I think it's a good uh, investment and you'll learn that throughout this course. Uh, Revit is a building information modeling, that's what BIM is, software that helps you have higher quality coordinate designs. That means that several different trades, uh, including engineers, um, contractors, they can all use Revit as you are putting a building um, together and a building project together. Uh, if you can go through their um, this website and you can see several different types of things that they offer that you can be using as you are advancing. Let's look at the Revit interface. It's a lot of things that go into Revit so we're gonna go step by step and we'll come back to it and we'll explain a little bit more as we go throughout this course. One of the ways this course is going to be taught is going from inside of Revit to outside features like printing out and exporting and also thinking about the different things that go in the building after your model. So this inside outside way of thinking is really connected to what building information modeling is because it's at the end of the day a tool. So be thinking about those things as we go in the back of your mind. So here we are looking at the Revit main interface, the place where you can uh, put your models as well as uh, your family. So this is where you're opening uh, the models, all your buildings or your uh, engineering models. And here is where you're going to be opening different components that go into Revit models. And as you see, this is actually qu quite simple and that's really useful. You can see um, the recent files at the top and then you see at the bottom some families that may have been customized or used in this project. Uh, above that of course you see the ribbon you see um, pretty much uh, that Revit can get started from scratch and when we click on this button here we can actually go to the home screen which shows an empty model but you see some of the commands in the menu in this icon bar and you also see the project name as well as some icons that will activate when we're working on a project. So it's all very useful to see all these things. Uh, I'll go over them little by little as we get through the project. In general, um, you will also notice some things about your ID where you can get help um, if you need to buy some other things like apps, which I have some that are really great. Um, we'll talk about a little, little bit of that. 
and uh, you pretty much are going to be going through this page a, a lot um, as you go into your models. But uh, we'll start by looking at a model and we'll be looking at one that I've modeled for this class. And we just double click that. As I talk about the interface, you'll have this understanding basic of what's going on. Before you start looking at Revit, there's something important you need to know. And uh, there are five different principles that are related to the problems people have with Revit that will help you turn around your thinking right before you start. So you'll be headed in the right direction. If you've already started, it'll keep you so you'll keep going in the right direction. The first thing is Revit is complex, but you can simplify. Revit has a lot of different power and tools that is going into the elements that make it great. But the idea is you need to know how to navigate those and set those up so the complexity becomes your ally as opposed to your enemy. Okay, another thing that people think about Revit is that it has a lot of hidden features. Well, the plus side is you have a lot of features in general that if you learn where they are, then they can help you go so much further along or you could see which features are the best for you and which ones you just don't even need to use or think about. Next is Revit is a constraint based system. What that means is there's a lot of things that are connected to other things so you can't just make anything all over the place in a model. The great thing about that is actually that you get to control your model better and you also will be less likely to have your model fall apart. So when you learn how to work with the constraints, you actually get great freedom. I've heard it said that as designers, um, creativity isn't just having no constraints, but it's having power over your constraints. So learning about your constraints will help you in using Revit. The next rumor is that Revit only works for big projects. That's not true at all. You can use Revit for a variety of different size projects. You can put your effort and your think tank together so that you can understand it in a credible way. So Revit is for several size projects and whatever you bring to Revit, uh, just bring an open mind and that will help you use it really well. Uh, the last thing is that Revit is married with BIM in a good way. So in the negative way, some people think that Revit will be super complex because it has all this stuff. But I found I could model incredibly creative and interesting things just like in any other program. So uh, BIM is a additional thing to Revit as a 3D modeler. It's not something that takes away. And we'll go over those sort of ways that you can keep free as you are working with Revit uh, throughout this course. This is our architecture tab. If we were working in structure, that would be, of course, one of the critical parts of working with structure, including the steel. And we see um, for MEP, they'd be concerned with the systems ribbon. So it's the icon ribbon um, that, that's related to what you're going to be doing. And sometimes the architect will use structure and, and possibly steel. But we're going to focus on architecture for this section. So. We have some basic things that we can build. Uh, starts from a wall and goes to different elements in a wall. Also components, which can be like a wall that you, oh, and different elements, as you can see in their example. And you can also do elements uh, like roof, ceiling, and floor. And finally, it talks about um, curtain walls, which are interesting uh, ways of using glass and material or just a different framing system. And then at the end, it goes to ramp, stairs, and railing, so different circulation components. And uh, the last three sections are the model, where you can add lines, uh, add letters, make a group. And you can also work on rooms, and this is more of a, the outside of Revit sort of thing, because you're going to be communicating about rooms, whereas the left side is where you're going to be making a model. Now, uh, the openings is something where you are going to be um, working to make a model uh, editing and working on that. So that's actually sort of internal, though it's on the right. Um, but the datum grid is definitely something that's something that's helping you organize your model. So there's some on the inside part of Revit with this. And the work plane is going to be valuable as we start to make things uh, later on.
Selection is a major part of Revit. So here are some things that are going to help you as you look at the interface for selection. Right down here we see that you have the ability to sec select the links that you're going to be working with. So that's <clears throat> that's useful uh, because sometimes you want to select one object and sometimes you want to select a lot of objects. So having that selected um, is, is useful um, though I don't typically use it. Um, so underlay elements because there's a lot of different things inside of Revit, you can choose things that are under other things. Um, we're not going to choose that one. You can also select pinned elements. So if you bring in an object, um, and then there's also select elements by face, which uh, it makes it very useful um, to operate in that method. And then you could also do some several different selections, including if you select multiple objects. You can click here and make sure that you're only collecting and selecting the object that you're focusing on. To set you up for success and to know and be on path with what I'm doing in this tutorial for Revit, I want you to know some key shortcuts that I'm using continuously. So it's of course very useful, as you see on the Revit tab to know the keys that you're going to be using most frequently. And so the ones that I use all the time, uh, typically in the modify command, um, are match properties, MA, um, and as well fillet, um, which I have called fillet, but they call it trim to corner, and also extend. These are incredible. And of course, move uh, is something that is always been used, as well as align. So you know, the idea is if I make a wall, I just press W. Um, and I, I start by making a type of wall. And the thing is, sometimes I will want to make a new different type of wall. You know, I'm always going to be pressing MA just really quickly. It's, it's almost like a reflex now. So knowing how to do that, knowing that in the course is going to be critical. Um, also, again, I always use fillet, so that just like I did before, if I undo that, you just match an item. Um, also, I'll always do fillet, and fillet, what I do is F, but you can of course make your own. So you just click trim the corner, and it's just so useful when you're working with. Um, items also if you're making something like a floor and the thing is if you you know the idea if you don't have one of your sides connecting you know being able to press F or whatever you have for trim the corner will make it so much more quickly uh, available and uh, if we go back to modify again a another useful one is definitely mirror because you have these geometry and you just want to get something going on the other side. So often I'll just uh, you know click on the items I want to mirror, press MM, and I'm just mirroring and it's it's just so useful to get that done very quickly. And sometimes I also of course use rotate. So you have rotate here and rotate will rotate around the center unless you press spacebar. And then you can choose the center to rotate on. And I do that all the time. And also, um, when you rotate, um, you actually can, of course, make make a copy. So that's a beautiful thing about you can just pretty make a new one. And so um, those are things that you would like to know. And also, in terms of um, offsetting, offsetting is so valuable. Here's the command here. Um, if you're trying to do like six feet but also just pressing O, you just make it a second habit to make sure that's all going in at the same time. And uh, extend is also incredibly valuable because you're gonna, you know, if you want these walls to be connecting, um, you just wanna select that wall and get this one going. But I've made it where it's EX, 
it's, so that's uh, just going to make sure that happens at the same time. So that's a that's something I'll use all the time. Um, and uh, another command that I use all the time, and I think would be valid for you, is align. So align is sort of like extend, um, only it's moved something to be connected with something else. So for instance, um, right now, <clears throat> um, none of these walls is sort of in the same plane, so it, it doesn't exactly align. Um, but if I, um, if I make a detail line, I press DL, and I'm making two boxes, you know, uh, clicking that align, or pressing AL, it's going to help me tremendously. I just press that button and it's already working. And of course it's obvious if you're copying things, that's just going to be, of course, very useful just to be able to select an object and press CO. Um, it, it's going to be one of the most valuable tools you have in Revit. So, As you're going through this class, look at the points that you can make it to customize shortcuts and make sure to um, go through those. To make your shortcuts, just make sure to always go to File and Options and as you are going to to the options click user interface and your keyboard shortcuts and if you're trying to make a something for copy you see CO mind that it might be for another item as well so be mindful of that so your shortcut is only going to be for that one uh, thing you're trying to do for instance if there's if there's something that's already in there for plumbing and you don't do plumbing there's no reason for you to be worried about that so that's something to mind as you're working in Revit so that you can have the workspace set up so you can be effective and productive. Make sure you have your key setups for your shortcuts and that you know those as you're working. So let's start our project with making our new architecture template. And before starting, we're not just going to start with walls, we're actually going to make a diagram, which would be a great way for you to look at some of the analytical tools and annotation and dimension tools in Revit. So we're going to currently work in what's called a working view. And we're going to duplicate the current view with the detailing. And we're going to label it. And you can label that in the properties dialog here. And we'll just call this a working level one. So we know some of the basic sizes that we want for our houses by going to the annotate ribbon and here we have various uh, different effects we can use. Region, some of the details where we can make a detail component or region where we can make something like a a box and the thing is you'll see that these are general lines we have a typical draw and if we press start or OK with the green arrow we'll see there's a region that we can move around and this is going to be the hallmark of what we're working on as we're analyzing a drawing and so we're going to use the annotate we're also going to be using uh, some detail lines. There's a difference between a model line. This is a model line, and you can tell by clicking here. And in here in the properties, you'll see it just talks about line, and a detail line uh, is uh, not clicked, though you can change it very simply. You're using the same command. You can if you want to know the difference, the 3D view will show your model lines. But if you make a detail line, and um, your detail line, uh, I it's, it's right here in your annotate. As we draw it right next to this model line, and they can have the same sort of features, you won't see it. So it's for working on figuring things out in your model and understanding. Um, but we're going to break down this line to see a little more of what you can do in terms of working with the model. 
I currently have uh, just a few lines. We're going to actually stick with the model line for right now. We can have different styles and we'll learn how to customize those a little bit later. Um, but you can see um, they can have different line weights. And to hide the line weight, to turn them on, you'll be clicking this button right here. Here are the types of line. Your beyond line will look like this. And then you have a center line, which looks like this. And then you have your demolish line and, and vice versa. And so right now we showing line weights, so that's useful for us. Let's go a little deeper into the annotate tab. So here from the start, we see different ways that we can make dimensions. So right now, we'll learn a little bit about the constraining. So before we just made a wall and then we made some lines, but now let's see what sort of things we can do with these constraints. You see, I just changed the dimension and this whole form changed. That's because they're constrained. And so when I click on a value, it'll just change it for me. And so that's a really cool way. You can also, if you go into or double click on this region, every time you click on a line, it will have a relationship to other lines. So if I know that I want to make a 16 by 16 space, I just click that. And all these are automatically changed because they're constrained. And so here are some other items that you can find here. Uh, revision Cloud, you'll pretty much use if you're doing a drawing edit. And you can also work on tagging different items in your model. And every tag has a particular family. And so I will go into the rest of this and then we'll talk about families for a little bit. So these are different tags for different elements all here and then there's some keynotes and ways to make legends. Um, color legends, all sorts of legends that are also useful when figuring out things about your space. Um, and then you also can put in symbols and different information about your model in your annotate tab and in, including text. And if you want to customize um, the type of line, you can have a really wide line, you can go to your Manage tab. And so your Manage tab is where you can start to work on your material settings. These are the various settings in the model, your snaps, your object styles. You can work on um, different parameters. I typically don't work on these unless I'm working with a family, which we'll go into a little bit later and you, there's some different um, systematic things that you can set up as well and you can also change some various things about your model you would create uh, your own settings for lines and different materials uh, and also different ways you set up your model here and then finally you can uh, manage your project and start dynamo from this manage tab and the insert ribbon would be where you'd uh, load in your plan. You can import CAD. You can also import an image, a PDF, etc. And loading a family is something we'll talk about later when we start to put ideas to populate our model. You can do a lot in terms of, well, if you're doing structural, you can find out information about your model. You can also do information about your plans. And you can also start creating schedules uh, for different systems. So this is some of the MEP and also planning parts to Revit. We won't be using that. Collaboration is for working with other people. So if you're synchronizing, you can make work sets when working with other people. Uh, so we'll look at that later in the course. And view, again, is where you're choosing how you, your model looks uh, in terms of lines you show, you don't show 
you can work, control your renders, you can control your views. And as we develop this model, we will make some of our own views um, so you can look at it. And you can also work on sheets, which we'll make at the end of this exercise. We look at add-ins now, where you'll see where you can batch print some of your drawings. You can also use some different plugins that you put in here. Enscape is a renderer that you can use in your model. We won't be using that for myself, but um, that's something that if you're interested in, you could be looking into. I think the Revit modeler uh, is really great, and you also can use things like V-Ray. There's all sorts of options for rendering. Uh, Revit has a lot of cool features and cool ways of working with geometry, but it might be very hard to get started um, for how Revit works with geometry. So we're going to go through some of the key things for just making geometry, uh, just lines, just 2D geometry in Revit. This works with detail lines, also with um, model lines. So right now, we are in a view that's just a typical view. Um, and I want you to know something about the difference between a regular view and a legend view. Um, you actually can't copy items from either sheets, sometimes legends, into your model. So it's a funny sort of way how things work. So like um, you're, you can't use model lines in a legend and while well, you can copy from your legend into your level, when you make a sheet, we'll make a sheet very quickly, there's a basic sheet, you can't copy that into a sheet. So uh, be mindful of that when you're working with Revit, um, where things can be located. Um, so as you won't uh, make something and wonder why can't I connect it there. But uh, if we'll go back and press DL for detail lines, and we'll look at how to make different types of lines. So this straight line, of course, the basic type. Um, we can also go in here, um, and this is a legend, so it only uses detail lines. We can make a rectangle. And you see we can actually offset it from our location where we started. So we actually can have it where it's offset from a location, so that's also really cool. And we also can actually um, put it with a radius. Um, so that's pretty cool as well. You can just make rounded shapes. Um, if we go back to uh, basic geometry, we also can make uh, polygons. And we choose how many sides they have, like if we want to do 12 sides. And we don't want any offset or radius. You now you'll see this complicated form. Um, one thing about it is after you have created it, you can't go back and change how many sides it has. So just something to, to mind. But you can always make sure that you um, just keep the same center point. So if you want to make it again. So let's look at some other geometry we can use. Uh, we can actually circumscribe geometry. Um, or we can just have it inscribed. So the, the one being where you can do one inside of a shape, other side, other one where we can do it. Um, and there's some literature about making inscribed geometry. You can also just make a basic circle. With options for circle, of course, are your your offset. So that's a very simple geometry form. Um, <clears throat> Now we have uh, for our curve sections, of course, the, the easiest is a just making a simple curve. And the idea is you can make it anywhere. However, you're not going to control when you're moving the point. You can't just stretch it and pull it. Um, so that's one of the caveats of Revit and its control geometry. Um, you, <clears throat> it will maintain its. Uh, diameter uh, unless you move the center you can't just move the point and stretch it and so you can also make center ends arc um, where you start at the center 
and you can go to a point. Now this also behaves the same way where you can't really change its diameter unless you really just go in and out and then you can't actually change where it's centered at so it's not super free. Um, also now this requires the tangent n arc requires actually starting with two points that are already um, at work so and it starts from the arc point or it can do a straight point as well but it doesn't it's not based on starting with a line it could it has to start with a point and so <clears throat> when you're using fillet fillet works with lines and not points um, so you can see this fillet was a little bit screwed up we go back and do that again we go back to detail line we click this point and this point and we make sure to click it on the right side so <clears throat> when you're filleting you can of course click it's too far off but uh, so you're clicking and you have these lines and then we also can make splines but be mindful when you're making a spline it seems very free but your spline actually isn't as free as you might think. You actually can't cut sli splines as easy. So I have this extend tool right here. Um, you also you can't fillet splines. So be mindful of working with splines because of that. Um, even in terms of splines working with each other. Splines just work radically different, so be mindful when you're working with splines. They don't work like lines. Um, and then of course if we use ellipse, ellipses are a lot more free in terms of you can stretch them. Um, and make sure to escape when you've added your geometry. So you can just move things out as, as desired and you can stretch them whereas you can't do that with the curve and also when you're making a basic line you can actually this will have all the the functionality of just um, moving something up and away but we, we still will have that limitation of um, like with circles where you cannot really move these points closer together. Another thing to see is uh, of course the pick line tool which is very effective if you're making a region for instance and you want to follow the line that is this thing you can just pick that line you can even constrain it um, if you want to say move that element in the future so the idea is now it's connected if I move that the um, the the fill area will follow with it. However, this is where constraints get crazy. Um, you can see that the constraint is not perfect. So be mindful of of when you constrain items that if something is flipped, it might not act the way you want it to do. So the um, to use the line tool is also a great added feature for you. So those are how you work with geometry in Revit. You of course can be working with groups in one way with your geometry. It's good to be very simple about making groups but these are some ways that you can work to make geometry do what you need it to do. Either if you're trying to sketch out a form that you want to make into models or if you're making a profile this will give you your freedom uh, and of course you can always use model lines uh, using the pick line tool and um, the pick line tool is something that um, again you want to make sure you're controlling when you're working with that.
but making geometry in Revit is constrained but that also helps it to be better with building information modeling so mind that as you're creating your geometry to always be thoughtful of how you can do it in a Revit way. Making generic models in Revit is a great way to play with form and also sketch different ideas. Um, there is of course two sort of ways of making these generic models. The first one is going through and modeling in place and the second one is uh, making masses and sites. And the great thing about sites is that you can actually make a building elements from your mass. So if you say you want to place a mass, um, Revit will be in show mass mode. Um, and it talks about your mass family. Um, so I think uh, that's something that uh, probably want to in place mass. Um, you can also add families or make templates. And so this way is is very basic where you you start with um, a pretty much a profile. And what you would probably want to see is a 3D view as you're making this. And you can choose what you're looking at. So right now we have this and you can choose what type of form it's going to start with. We want to make a solid form. So now we have this solid form. And what if we want to have some um, interesting um, part to it? So if you want to add an edge, um, it tells you sort of some of the things that will deal with it. Or we want to put a profile upon one of the faces. Um, so it's 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 not entirely easy. Um, so um, we can click Edit Profile. We can just from this side maybe add a bit of a chamfer. And you see that that add that changed one side. So now we can say maybe we have the bottom face. Um, we'll have a different sort of set of parameters. And so this this does give you a lot of freedom uh, in Revit because you know you can be playing around with this this form, um, and you also of course could uh, <clears throat> could have it where you're creating a form by itself. To make 3D forms, uh, you have to create lines and work with them. That's fine. Uh, let's let's go ahead and um, um, work with adding um, a bit of a a bit of a fillet to our profile. Um, and we'll just actually come in here and this is not the easiest thing to work with um, with Revit um, so it's something you want to spend some time to get to know uh, so a lot of people will say I'm working on a plan let's work on that plan um, you can just edit the profile here and if you've seen my geometry course that's something that help you figure this one out because um, the idea is you'll be working with geometry to figure out what's going on. Okay, we're going to edit our bottom profile. We're actually going to use our top profile for a reference point. We'll just copy this fillet, and we see this is actually 10 foot 6. So we can actually come back down here, edit this base profile. And we'll do that same 10 foot 6. And it's it's neatly. We're not going to discard. Uh, sorry, I accidentally pressed that. OK, so now we have this interesting form that we've made. Um, just very simple. Um, so it's 
There's a lot of freedom with making generic masses in Revit. Um, and then you could even just say um, where you go into your mass menu, where if it's a certain size, you can go ahead and add floors to it. Um, level two and level one. So that's useful to just have a generic floor here. And it's just a mass floor, so you just for demonstration. And then you could go into your massing of site and you can start saying, let's make a curtain system. Like if I want this to be a curtain system right here, I just can press um, press that curtain system. And uh, we'll just try that one more time. So we want to make a curtain wall for this. We'll add a curtain wall on this side as well. A 5 by 10 system. That was a create system. So now we see that it's not as curvy as we want on this side. That one's fine. So what we could do is come back over here. So we can go ahead and uh, we actually do want it to be constrained, but if we want to work on it to be a little more, we might just actually start from scratch so we can actually get a better um, curve. Actually, we'll select on it, see if we can do a little better versus a 5 by 10. We'll just come in and duplicate it and make it a um, maybe a five by or a one by one and so that helps us immediately have a lot more freedom so take that freedom from your generic mass into your modeling and it will regenerate it and figure it out so so now we have a curvilinear, two curvilinear walls. And our, our remaining walls, we could just say that would be something like maybe brick. So we want to make a wall over here. And we'll just make a generic 8 inch wall. Make one here. And we could, of course, also come into massing a site, make a roof. And we'll do a generic 12 inch roof. And immediately we have a building that's made from some of the generic components in Revit. So, this is the first method of making um, some 3D items in your model. Um, of course, this is obviously for building, modeling, and figuring out. And there's so many components, like I'd have to make an entire course about making 3D geometry uh, with Revit masses. But you've got a little bit of a primer. It's very useful to get some basic forms out and figure out you know, how to put that in the floors. You can generate something like a tower really quickly or an outside form. Getting more intricate would take a little more time. Um, but since you can make things very quickly in, in Revit anyway, that's the question about using masses is something that takes some time to get into and learn how to use. Obviously some people are freer in some other software, but Revit is cool for its ability to make a lot of information in your model. And this is something you'll have to practice a little bit with. The second type of method for massing in Revit and 3D generation besides making the components is making generic models. So this is very useful if you're massing out a part of a building or some cabinetry. It's good to work on generic masses. Um, so let's go into our component um, model place and you could of course also save this as a family and help other people working on making that um, for any project they're using it or they could just copy their generic model in and you can see there's all sorts of types of um, models and the, the great thing about this is this will be included in the building information model if you have like it as a stair or a um, a type of wall, etc. So that's a useful thing. Typically, generic models, what I do to get started. 
So in generic models, we have different types of forms that we can be working with. We'll make each type of those. We'll start with the extrusions. Um, extrusion is just where you, just like it says, go straight up. A blend is where you're using two profiles, one at the bottom, one at the top. The revolve is where you can center around a form and sweep follows the path. And sweep blend, you can have two different types of profiles. And then you can have these sort of information uh, component within a component. Um, so that's a, a useful way um, to have that in your component. Uh, besides your form, you can actually use something that's repeatable. Um, and then you can also take out with a void form. And there's some other uh, 3D tools that are usable. We'll just make the forms right now. So we're going to start with a 3D form. So it, Extrusion is going to be something that starts on a plane. You use the same 2D geometry from Revit. Um, you can actually have a any sort of uh, extrusion. You can have multiple parts, but they do have to be closed. That's the one thing. And it gives you a extrusion start and end point. So if I set 10 feet, um, that would be there. And so now if we go into our 3D view, we'll see that the extrusion is 10 feet long and it's this size. And so one thing we can do to make this more interesting, of course, is we could actually start saying, um, if we want to have a particular profile on this, um, that we can create that using a uh, void. And the void could also be an extrusion. So now we could do a void form of extrusion. And the thing about it is we've been working on the ground plane but we can actually choose the plane we work with where you make that profile. So it's going to be a two-dimensional. So we can choose any plane that's in the model. So we want to pick a plane. And so now uh, we've made our plane. And what we can do is now saying, if we want this to be the profile, that's subtracted. Um, and we're going to do the same thing over here. and we actually want to let it make it and then we'll align it. We're going to align our edge over here to this. And so now we actually have two forms, but you only see one because the other one was an avoid form. And we could do that same process on this side where we could say, uh, let's make a avoid form. of an extrusion and we could say we actually want to set it as a, a plane in the model with pick a plane and since our previous one wasn't there we actually can uh, just come in and make this uh, separately and thing about it is that's when, when you're making something you can always actually go back and right now I want to actually make that on the same form we actually can just say right now to uncut it so the void will cut the file if you don't press anything um, but you can always uncut it and add it at a second time so now we want to create two void forms and we're going to set it on this face and it's going to be doing something in this way and now we'll see how that plays out and now we want to probably have it going from here to here and so now all we need to do is say cut and now that automatically cut this form and now we can say cut again and we say cut and now we have two voids cutting into our object here what if we wanted to make um, some sweeps uh, or <clears throat> uh, this idea of if we want to have a profile and we want to have it on a path for instance if we came and made a curvilinear path and we want to probably set our plane make sure it's going to be a plane we want so we do level one and 
we'll make our path where it's just curving out a little bit. And now we want to um, choose our, our profile. And we actually can choose a profile that we make or we can find one in the project. For instance, if I choose the fascia, um, that will, when we press um, go, finish edit mode, we see it's, it's a tiny fascia that's rotated along here. But we also could come into this sweep and press edit sweep when it's created. And we could uh, edit the profile. Um, and we just can select it like that. And we can just um, load profile. Or we could just click um, click on that and say uh, by sketch. And we can just edit the profile right here. And the thing about it being curved is you don't see the face of it. Um, so that's the one challenge for making profiles. You want to make sure that you can see what what it what is it doing. So um, because the idea is if you're not perpendicular to the face, you'll have an issue um, seeing what's actually happening. Um, but one great way to figure that out is actually you can. Um, <clears throat> You can find out um, the plane of the lines. Like we can say, um, orient to a plane. And we'll pick a line. And we just click that. And now we have a proper plane. So now we can see exactly the size and how that will look. So now we'll just. Uh, try it out so it needs to be closed so we'll just fillet this make sure that's flayed on this side as well and now we look at 3d and we'll finish this sweep and now we see our sweep is this cool little form so let's try a sweep blend and we'll just sketch another path we'll just try another curvy path um, And we're going to make our profile, our first profile. And we'll just edit that. And that's going to be, we're just going to keep it simple for now. We'll just do that in that plane. And we're going to do this select profile 2. We'll edit that. And that's going to be more of this sort of form. And we'll move that point over. And so we'll have it crawling up here to make that form. So that's a cool way of having that sweep blend from two forms. Uh, but that's not all. That's sweep, sweep is a little bit different from just a basic blend, because a basic blend is just giving a top and a bottom, which is used to if you're having like a, a column form that um, is going to be changing at the top or something. Um, now we're going to edit the top. And the top is going to be um, smaller than that. And we see that it's saying now going up one foot. Now we say 10 feet. Now we also can change the vertices. So right now you see how it's going to go up. Um, you can choose if the vertice is not going to be the way you like. You can change that. So we can also twist it. So you see this line will connect to that line. So it's it's uh, very useful in how you figure that out. Okay, so now we have this, and that's how you would do your your blend, just a basic extruded blend, basically one sweep to another. Uh, and now we'll work on a revolve. So a revolve is where we will choose our boundary line. And right now we're just going to um, we want to know which plane we're working in. That's the one, the one challenge. <laughs> so we're, we're actually going to set the plane of, of uh, this plane, and we're going to make our our axis line. 
right here. And then we're going to work on our boundary line. And we'll just do an interesting form. So we're going to make sure, of course, that our, our uh, boundary line is closed. So it happens to overlap the axis line, but don't get deceived. Um, okay, so yeah, so we see that it rotated around that line. And so we, of course, also could have come in here with our property browser and set that to 180. And we could have started somewhere else. And the great thing about it is always, is when it started, it's constrained to a plane, but you just can click on that plane constraint button. And when it's gone, you can actually move it freely around your model um, for the most part. Um, <clears throat> You can see part of it is still constrained. That's why you probably want to make a construction line. Um, but now it's it can go wherever you like for it to go. All right. So uh, and if you want to rotate it, you can. Um, you have to choose the plane in which you're going to rotate it. <laughs> That's the funny thing about that. Um, because right now you see the plane where we're we're in. We could always just get out of that plane. And we can go back to our create and we set the plane as the level one. And now when we rotate it, we can just rotate it like that. And one thing we can also do, which is really cool, is we can also make openings. And so I'm going to finish this model. And we're going to make some geometry in Revit so we can work on openings. So Walls are forms that can have openings. Um, pretty much different surfaces can have openings. So when you're making a generic model, you might want to think of a, a window that you want to place in your, your building. Um, so if you click window here, and you want to make um, a opening for the window, and you want to make the window, what you're going to do is you're going to set the plane where you want the window to go and then you're going to make opening and we're going to select the host it's going to be this wall and we could choose any form that we want and you see the opening is made and so now we could go back and say that we want a sh extrusion that's going to be our frame and as you can see here um, you can make a material here and you also can select this category for this so we want to make a frame so as this is not just a generic um, component it has like some specialized functions and so all we could say is uh, maybe we have this and we have this coming in maybe three inches and that's as much as we want to have for that going. And this extrusion is going to be about uh, four inches. And we just want to make sure it's on the right side. So it's coming out four inches. We probably want to have it going through the wall. And the wall is about eight inches. So we'll go to negative 10. So it'll be on both sides of the wall. So that's our window opening. And also for making a window, we want to make that extrusion. We can um, select the lines inside of our frame. And we can just say going from 0 to probably 2. And make sure in our subcategory category to make that glass. And be mindful if you don't make it, the you need to probably make it the glass material. Don't uh, Just click by category. And from your materials, make sure to select glass. And you press OK. And there you have it. You've made a window, an opening. So that's another type of generic models. And there's all sorts of types. So um, Autodesk does have some good Revit instruction on making unique masses. Um, but 
that's one of the key and uh, basic ideas of masses. Just play around with that. Finally, looking into our what we can do with our we can look into with making our uh, pl model in place mass. We'll again go with our generic models. Is uh, we can work on making some information about our model that would be useful when we're coming back to it. And the great thing about it is uh, the model lines will be visible. Uh, so you can use those as reference points. Uh, however, your reference lines are not visible and they could be used for construction purposes. Um, for instance, uh, if you're, since this is a window type, you might want to say, um, we're going to set this view. For instance, if you want to set um, some lines to help us orient a frame or something, you could use this. But the um, model line could be useful if we're going to make a projection line. Um, so we also can choose how the window is going to be cut. So if we want to put this view in, we press finish the model. If we're going to make a, we go to our level one. And if we make an elevation that will look at this as we finish the model, we'll look at an elevation and we see our little projection lines. So those are some ways to figure out working with generic models. Generic models can be helpful for a lot of things, but you want to spend time to figure out how you're going to model something, if it's going to be extrusion or if it's going to be a blend, you'll figure out by using some critical ideas based on those methods. Those are some ways of making and looking at views in Revit. We'll of course go through that as we're working on the project, how you can specify that and understand that in context to a project. But making views is a powerful part of Revit because views will update to what's in the 3D model. And you don't have to change a view to see the model again. If you put that view there, it'll always capture that element. Um, so the thing is getting familiar with the fact that the views are constrained and making sure that if something is moved that you can understand let it to go back in the view and just get free with it as it is a free-flowing process of keeping your model with the information that's going outside from that information that's been modeled inside. Revit has some incredible ways to view your project and understand it in 3D as well as in elevation. That's where you're looking straight onto a model. In addition to looking at it in perspective, which Revit also offers. So I just want to give a primer before any projects about views in Revit. And we're going to look at some projects, views in a project so you can get the feel and what's really going on. This is a house project that we'll be working on in this class. And these are some elevation tags. So the elevation tags, if we look close, comes both with a sheet name and also a number. So that's when it goes on a sheet. Now to break it down, when you start a Revit project, it will have four of these, north, south, east, and west. And when you click on your tag, it will tell you the type of elevation that it is. And this is just the tag. When you click on the unique view, it will give you information about that view, including the scale. And as we look into our project browser, we'll see more information. We'll have the sale and different options for that view, including how it will crop, the extents, and also things like the template and the name. And finally, you'll see what filter uh, is set up for the phase. Phasing deals with if you're doing with a new or existing model. So let's click into here. So as you can see, when you click on that um, particular tag, the letter um, or number and the caret shape, the triangle shape, 
it will go to a view. And this view will have a crop window. And you can find that crop window right here. We can show the crop region. And we also can show beyond the region. Or we can crop it. But you also can find that crop region if we go back to level one right here because you'll see the extents of this little point are going to be the crop region uh, width. And then you also can move it somewhere inside. You'll actually be making a section because the view is inside. However, if you want to make a internal elevation, you have to make a new one because this is still set up for external. So what we need to do is we actually can just click on this tag and we can convert it right here into an interior elevation. So interior elevation works just like a elevation for exterior, except for if you click on it, it typically has a little less information. Um, and you can see on this tag, when we click on it, it has other information. It has um, where you can add a, another view. And each one comes with four directions. So you can only have four views associated to this tag. And each tag has an individual tag for a view. So each tag for the elevation set comes with four unique directional tags. Now the type of thing that you're seeing here is a interior elevation that includes multiple information. It includes the name and the number. So here's how to customize that tag. If you double click on the, the tag and go to edit type, you see from the family's property that there's graphical information about this. Um, there's uh, information about the callout tag and there's also what it would be called if it's a reference view. So a reference view is not actual view but it's named for another reference or another view that's in the model. So you don't have to make a view for each reference. Um, you can make a reference view and these are made besides the one in the model that you can convert by going to the view tab and the view ribbon and clicking elevation and the elevation tag will typically orient to the closest wall you just press escape to get out of that and so this doesn't have any names or sheets so it's bare right now um, so when you're making a view is when you decide we click again whether it will be a view that's just based on something it sees or if it will be a reference view. Now if we make a reference view we can choose that same detail for north and we could put it here and it gives a tag identifier of sim for being a similar tag. So if we go back into the family of this interior elevation, we actually can change the type of callout tag that's used by clicking on it. And it will go to this page. So if you cancel, you'll go back. If you click on this, it will show you what type of callout tag is used. So one thing you could do for this callout tag for interior elevations um, is that you could change it to another type. Um, for instance, if you wanted to add that, you'd have to add that in the families. So be mindful that that's something you'd have to load or edit. And you could find this callout head within the project browser. Um, you also can change if it's a circle, half circle, other options are half square. Click OK. And you see your elevation tag will become a square. And if we go back to edit type, we can change this here and make this to be half circle. And actually now we see in this elevation tag family, we also have some 
different information we could actually put here. So we could have where it just puts the, the field arrow in the view name, or we could say field arrow and uh, leave that by itself, press OK. And the great thing about this is now you don't have that name for this, and this is still an interior elevation. And if we go back into here, we can actually see that the square had the filled arrow, but we can also choose the circle filled arrow. You press OK. Now we have an interior elevation tag that doesn't include extra information. So that's a very useful way of making these views. Now let's click into this interior elevation and add a new one for this wall by clicking this point here. So this is not a reference tag. We click in here. What we can see from the interior elevation that's different is it actually makes a crop right at the wall. And so if you make it on the inside, it will conform to the level and the wall. And you can set a template you, where you choose what type of things you see and you can make that unique for your own type of elevations. An elevation is a detail view which means though you can draw um, though you can draw detail lines so by going to annotate and you can make a detail line here or you can press DL you actually cannot make model lines in this view unless you pick, pick a plane and pretty much go from the plane that you're working with. So you can in some sense work on that model line but pretty much you are uh, a little bit limited here. So this is a model line but the thing is it's in 3D space. So whereas in, if you actually go to the 3D and if we take off the roof for this, we'll hide this element, you will see that this model line was drawn in elevation. However, uh, the thing about it is it will always ask you to pick a plane when drawing as elevations are not meant for drawing of model lines. Um, so, and we'll stop that. All right, so your detail line also means that, or does detail view mean you, of course, can make text? You can use dimensions. And you could also, of course, click on items and families of Revit and work on them in the elevation view. So that's all accessible within an elevation. So elevations can be made in multiple ways. You can make many as you want for a project. Uh, you can coordinate and make reference ones. And when you place them on a page, they'll conform. For instance, if we made a new sheet, by right clicking on sheet and we add we just drag in an elevation we see elevations in our project browser it will come in just like we made it so if it's not cropped it will not come in cropped for instance here this is cropped as we said from here if you bring that in it's called Elevation 1B. It's interior elevation, so you see the under interior elevations. If it's cropped, it'll come in like this. But if we don't crop the view and we just click Do Not Crop, when we bring that in, it'll show everything in the model that was visible. So that's a mindful thing to think about for elevation and views, for orthogonal views. But we also can make 3D views in Revit. So here are some ways to make 3D views within Revit. The first type of 3D view in Revit, of course, is the standard 3D. 
from pressing the default 3D view. So in this view, you can create things, choose particular view effects, and also choose different ways to see the model. You can see it in perspective. And you navigate with your middle mouse button or your, by using your scroller and your middle mouse button. And you also can navigate by clicking on a part of your model and right clicking here and orient to a plane clicking that button and you can actually choose a particular plane to look at in Revit so this is useful when modeling as you can imagine so this is oriented this plane and so this is a working view and typically it actually has a crop but typically people want use it uncropped just like elevation views you actually can crop this and you also can put this on a sheet and so that's a beautiful thing about these sort of elevations and as you can see when you rotate it doesn't affect the crop region and so the 3D working view is something to get familiar with, finding out what do you want to show, moving around in the model. And when you're finished and you want to save a view, you can click down here for locking your view, where you can choose the option of saving orientation and locking your view. And you actually can't save it as this name because Revit only allows letters. So you would just type a name in and you can see your 3D views under your 3D view um, area of your views. Next we'll look at a type of view that is made from a perspective and you can use that by making a camera and you just place it down and we're using that same crop window to choose what we see. Now perspective is a little different from your 3D view as a lot of times you will navigate it using this navigation wheel and when we click on the navigation wheel we just click on that we get options to zoom, to pan, to orbit, rewind and all you have to do is click on it and move. If you, you're not, it pretty much follows you around and you get to do whatever you want to do with the model. You can orbit, you can stand on one point and look around. You can go up and down, you can pan. You can also rewind to your last view. So that's very useful and you also have that same ability from, from your view categories to make it shaded, to show the shadows, um, you can render this by going to the view tab and clicking render where you get options for saving your image and you can do different things with lighting or rendering and that we'll go into that later and finally from this view you also have of course um, the ability to walk around but if you want to save your walk around that's where we get to our next type of view which is our walkthrough making a walkthrough in Revit is very simple you just go to your top tab where you have 3D and you start clicking points in your model where you want the walk to start you press escape to stop and you will actually find this in your walkthroughs. And if you double click on a walkthrough, you'll see what the camera sees. And if you're not seeing what you need to see, unfortunately, walkthroughs are not edited like other views. You will to change your walkthrough, you'll have to click it in with the level, and you'll have to click edit walkthrough. But from there, you have to make sure that your 
or click no. If you click off of it, it will ask you to stop or quit editing, and that's not what you want to do. If you're trying to edit it, what you can use is this top bar which says previous or next frame. And then from each one, you can change the view right there. And make sure to hit it on the right side. And you also can change where the path is by clicking on path and moving that location. And so now when we go to the walkthrough view, we're not going to quit editing. We want to make sure to go back to level where we edited the path and go to active camera. And now we'll see from our edit walkthrough menu what you're going to see in the model and we can click play and it'll play through.